Um, I thought it was a really good first half performance. It was um, a dominating first half performance, to tell you the truth. And um, um, I think we dictated to them, you know, um, with and without the ball. Um, didn't get that second goal. And then uh, the worry was, as the game went on, you know, obviously a few of the guys have played 120 minutes on a on an artificial field and done the travel from from Vancouver. You kind of think fatigue might um, might kind of weigh in, and um, and the, 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 oh, you know, they've got some quality players, haven't they? Like Henri and Wright Phillips, Dax McCarty, you know, you could name quite a few. And um, so you just you just worry that you, you know that that tiredness might come in, but um, their mental strength, I think, got them through it, and um, they had a um, a spell there where we had to we had to rely on our shape and um, and um, our strength of character and, and we did and we held them out and we we got a bit of luck but we deserved that luck I think we deserved that luck and then um, and in the end um, obviously the second goal um, put the game to bed. I just thought that um, we just needed some balance in there. Um, I knew I, I, we were always going to get chances at BMO. We were always going to get chances when you've got the, the quality of players that we have up top. Um, and I just thought we needed a, a kind of a defensive balance that that screens kind of Henri and um, Wright Phillips. So um, so no, nothing can really get into their feet as much, and um, and they might have to go long a bit more. And and I know our guys are very good at the, in the air, and they read the game very well. So it, it was a, a defensive mood that was. Hoping to be a kind of offensive move to tell the truth, but 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 Brad was um, amongst many was um, was superb. He was um, you know very experienced in there and um, read the game very well. Ryan, you went with Hagland and had Henry on the bench. Hagland, the rookie, seemed to have a great game against you know, one of the game's greats in Henry and Wright Phillips. What were your thoughts about his game and what was the decision process in him over Henry? Well, um, one of the one of the Great things I admire about Nick is that he just absolutely has no fear, no fear in life, in anything, let alone a football game. Um, he's going to be a success, whatever he does, whatever he touches, he'll be a success because of his personality. He's such a, he's such a, he's such a uh, energetic, charismatic man, and so um, I had no problem about who he was coming up against because the the bigger the the challenge, the kind of the more he, the greater he kind of rises to. Um, with Daniel, he just played 120 minutes. He had a sore quad. Um, he got a bit of a head knock and that, and um, it just felt like he needed a rest. And Nick had kind of deserved his chance. And um, and again, um, in this game, you've just got to you've got to win off it. You got to take those chances. And later in the game, there was an altercation with uh, Armando and <coughs> I believe it wasn't Defoe. You must have got a pretty good view from the bench there. What did you see? Happen? Well, they, they were niggling at. Jermaine all game, especially in the second half. You know they were they were very physical, two very physical centre backs, and they were trying everything they can. And, and as you would, you know, they're you know Jermaine's a world class player, and they're just trying to put him off his game. And I and I, and I, I would like to think that Jermaine could have got to protect it a wee bit more, um, especially the linesman. If the referee doesn't see it, the linesman should see it. Just the constant, you know, nudging in the back and pushing and elbows and all that. And I know it's football, and that's and that's um, how the game game is played. But um. But um, you know, uh, Henri's been been had, had some protection over the uh, over the years. So um, I hope they they start kind of protecting Jermaine because you know he's probably going to get a lot of that in this league. Are you worried about uh, how Jermaine might react in this game since the news came down from England that he wasn't going to make the team? Like, did you guys talk about that much or anything like that? No, not at all. Um, but that's exactly how I thought it re he'd react. Um, you know, this chance was a was a it was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? So um you know that's that's Jermaine Defoe. Um and that's why England will miss him dearly, I think, come World Cup time. So sort of circling back to Bradley, do you think with, with Michael going, do you think he could continue to slide in the role or is that I know you think he signed Warner earlier this week, so Well, um the way what the reason why we signed Colin was to to play that sort of role, um, to give a balance to a team, and I think you could see it in the um, in the in the the organisation of the team. Um, there's a lot, there's a bit of balance to it. It actually felt better, and um, and that's why we signed Colin. And um, um, with Bradley, it was it was a bit of a it was a risk, you know. Like he's played there before, but you know, many moons ago. 
but he's such an experienced player that you can put him, he's kind of player, and this is why we signed him, is you can put him anywhere on the field and he'll, he'll do a role for you, um, a very good role for you. And, um, and I think he's the kind of player that the more games he plays, you know, he, the kind of harder he gets. He, he's, he's kind of, he's starting to look a bit more, um, I suppose, in tune, if you know what I mean. Well, when, when we started the season, we played him with Michael, and Michael used to, you know, he, he'd run forward a lot, and, and, and he, Jonathan would have to balance out the attack and generally have to kind of sit a bit more, which is not, which, is, which he did very well, but it's not his strength. And um, so the reason why we put him out wide is he, can, is he can make runs into the box, he can get in between the scenes, he can come underneath the strikers, he can stay out wide, and he, and he has more of an attacking kind of role, where if he's with Michael, they both kind of went and we didn't have really a real balance to it. And he likes playing out there, you know, that's probably, he'd prefer to play out there. Um, so, um, yeah. Ryan, the injury report had Wiedemann and Richter both on it. What, what are their issues? Um, no, I don't think they were injured. Oh, just an error? Yeah, I think there was an, I don't want to get my, um, my media guy in trouble here. If well, he's, he's well, he obviously is. He must have made a must have must have been an assistant who made that error. <laughs> <laughs> he has about three of them. How important were your were your fullbacks today, uh, pushing in, kind of congesting, and, and really being compact against Henri and Brett Phillips? Is that something you decided? Yeah, I'm glad you you brought that up because I thought those two were were brilliant today. That that fullback role can be a really um, um, I, I mean, it, it's an un, unforgiving one. They don't really get much praise when they play well. And, um, but I, I thought those two were fantastic today. And they had to deal with some one-on-ones, and they reinforced the, the, the midfielders when they stepped. And, and as you said, they, um, they had to really help the centre-backs um, when those balls get down the, in between the lines of them. And um, if you saw the goal that we scored, it, it was an example of a fullback that hadn't helped out his centre-back when it was made down the run with Jermaine's goal. So... We um we kind of work on that and um, we work on telling them to look after the the centre back shoulders, but also be able to read the diagonal balls when played. And um and Justin I thought did that very well, and um and so did Mark Bloom. Ryan, can you talk about Jermaine Defoe's performance? And do you think that he had a, an additional uh, you know excitement about him facing an old uh, North London derby rival like uh, Henri? Yeah, probably. Uh, I mean, no, no, but I'm just going to say probably because it sounds good. <laughs> Arsenal, Tottenham, and yeah, and he's put one over him. So, no, I, I don't think they're very good friends, to tell the truth. Um, you know, but I think playing New York, it's New York's New York, isn't it? And um, and um, you know, we want to Toronto. We want to we want to be a team that is up there that that people love to take our scalp, and that's what's happening at the moment. And um, so we've got to learn to to deal with that kind of pressure. Um, so it was some um, big stars versus big stars. So it's, it's exciting for the league. Is Cesar off um, I think he, he's off. Yeah, he'll be um, he'll be he'll be around for a few more days, but then he then he's going to be leaving. So he won't be in Kansas City. No. What, what happened to Osorio in the first half? He seemed to be shaking his hand, and then he did he have a bandage on it? Did he? Happen? I think it was something uh, his fingernails. One of his fingernails and his his little finger got. Hurt, I think. Uh, hopefully, it'll be all right. This is a there's, a there's quite a few hockey people will be reading this. You know, I can't be saying that. <laughs> he got it. He got it. Just he jammed his wrist, and um, and you know, he'd be too embarrassed to say that it hurt. So I did not say anything more. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks.